Hello, so today's topic is Web Design and Accessibility, a Beginner's Guide to SEO. The purpose of this video is to help you understand the relationship between web design, accessibility and SEO and to guide you in creating a website that is accessible to everyone. So let's start with what is web design. Web design includes both the layout and the appearance of the website. Appearance includes everything from colors, font and how the website is looking visually. Whereas layout includes how the website is structured in a logical manner. Apart from these things, a good website design should be user friendly, easy to navigate and visually appealing. When you create a website, you must create a seamless user experience that minimizes friction. You don't want your users to be stuck in your website and you don't want your users to go away from your website just because you don't give a better user experience to them. Now let's talk about how a good website should look like. So here are some things I have made a list for you. So the first of all, the, a good website should have a simple and easy to navigate design. Next, the website's purpose should be clear and easy to understand. Like whenever you land on the website's homepage or maybe service page or any, any page for that matter, you should be able to understand what is the purpose of this page, what is this page trying to tell me or show me or sell me. The next thing is that it uses consistent design elements throughout the website. When we talk about design elements, there are mostly things like colors, typography and font, things like that. So it should be consistent. You don't want your design elements to look different on one page and then look entirely different on different page. This confuses users and it will not be a good user experience. The next thing is that it is designed with users in mind. When I say design with users in mind, it should be a design that caters to your users. Your users should be able to navigate through pages and they should be able to understand all of the information that you have put out in your website without any problems or any friction. The next thing is that it loads fast. Obviously, the speed is very important these days and speed is also a ranking factor. So it should load fast and it should have a visual hierarchy. This means that some elements can be bigger than others and there should be visually not everything should be same, you know, like every element is bigger or every, every element is smaller. There should be different kinds of elements on the website and they should look like that they have a visual hierarchy and lastly the website should be mobile friendly this is not something that is, you are not aware of because mobile friendly is an important thing so now we are discussing the key components of web design for seo and the first factor that we are looking at is mobile friendliness again it is not something that you are not aware of because it is a ranking factor and 64% of total searches are done on mobile. For example, when you are searching for something, it is not important that you have a desktop or computer or laptop on your hand. You most of the times you have your phone on your hand and you done most of you do most of your searching through your phone. So this is why mobile friendliness is important because if you are looking at a website, you don't want the website to look like the desktop version on the mobile because it will be harder to navigate you have to like pinch and zoom and do things like that to navigate the website and it hurts the user experience next thing is that google predominantly uses the mobile version of a site's content crawled with the smartphone agent for indexing and ranking this is called mobile first indexing so before mobile friendliness and everything was a big thing Google used to crawl the websites through their desktop agent, but now they primarily crawl and index the mobile version of the website first. The last thing that, is, that we are talking about is if your website is usable on mobile, then it is a positive signal because it is a ranking factor. And if there are 10 websites on the SERP when you search on mobile and one of these websites are ranking in top three and it is not usable on mobile then it can send a negative signal to Google that this website is not usable on mobile. Users are coming back and they are looking for another website to go to. So this can be a negative signal. And on the flip side, if your website 
is usable on mobile then it can send a positive signal and that can help your seo and your rankings and things like that the next thing that we are talking about is navigation so navigation is not just for web design or seo it also plays a vital role in accessibility when we talk about navigation it is mostly things like your header footer or side bar or side navigation or things like that so this is not just for web design or seo purpose it is also for accessibility because if a user is landing on your site and the header or, or the header and the footer on your site is not present so how will they navigate the site how will they know which pages to visit and what kind of content you have even if you have the best content on the planet but if your website is not navigational enough then how users will see your content like how can you expect your users to see your content the next thing is that important pages should be listed in the navigation like we talked in the last point navigation should have pages and it should mostly have important pages like when you are visiting e-commerce sites like amazon they have important pages and important things on their navigation like their header and the footer so you should be able to visit those pages and navigate through them easily and and it helps search engines understand the important pages on your site because you obviously don't want a random post to be on your header or your footer you will include include uh, important pages on your navigation and it will help both users and search engines to find and understand what is the important pages on your site the next thing that we are talking about is speed page speed is a crucial ranking factor and it not only helps seo rankings again but it is also an important thing for user experience again like we talked before if a user is landing on your website and it takes 10 seconds to load 10 second might not be a huge number for you when we are talking like this but when a website takes 10 seconds to load or maybe anything more than 2 seconds or 3 seconds it will count as a bad user experience and you don't want your user experience to be bad the next thing that we are talking about is that things that slow down your site and the first thing is the third party scripts so i have made a list for you that what kind of third party scripts are we talking about so you have seen this kind of error when you audit your site in google lighthouse or something this is mostly because of these things again these are this is not the complete list this is just an example so things like social sharing buttons so suppose we are on this website and you can see these are the social sharing buttons that are on the side these can slow down your site and we don't if you if if the if people are actually not using those buttons that you can remove it because i don't think many people actually uses these buttons but yeah this is something i wanted to show you the next thing that we are talking about is video player embeds like youtube or vimeo if you have uh, a blog post and then you have embedded three or four videos it can slow down your site but it's not that important if you if you have optimized every part of your site you don't want to be optimizing too much you know so the next thing is advertising iframes basically ads so ads slow down a site a lot so when you are it can happen that when when you are opening a website and it has a lot of ads it it just you know does this thing like it just loads and loads and loads and loads and loads it doesn't even complete the loading of the web page even if the main content of the website is like showing properly so advertise ads basically slows down your site and the next is analytic and metrics step scripts not sure about metrics but analytic scripts do slow your site things like suppose you have 20 <laughs> different kind of analytics on your site like google analytics or maybe hotjar or maybe i don't know like there are a lot of analytic tools so suppose you have a lot of analytics scripts on your website then it can slow down your site 
The next thing is that A-B testing scripts for experiment. Suppose you are running experiments on a blog post that which uh, title tag is more getting more uh, click through rates and things like that. Then it can because you are using scripts for that. Then it can uh, you know in uh, slows down your pages, your site. And the things like helper libraries. I think the most common uh, reason why WordPress sites or maybe element elementor site slows down is because of jquery so, and things like you ju you just need a single animation thing on your page and you add this i don't know this plugin or something and it has 25 different javascript files and it is slowing down your site you don't want to do all of that please please don't do that and lastly the server can also you know affect your page speed you want to get a good hosting provider like i'm really telling you i have experienced this first and and i'm telling you you need to get a good hosting provider i actually made a video on this if you want to see it i think in this list we have talked about third party scripts ads plug plugins so plugins again if you have a lot of plugins on your website then it can slow down your website suppose you have 23 different plugins and this and most of these plugins are only for like one single thing on your page like you want to add like social buttons or maybe a single animation on your page then these plugins can actually bloat your site and it can slow down your site next is themes you have to choose a good theme when you are making your site i have talked about this in the last video so you can check that out and Again, the next thing is media. Media includes everything from images and the videos that are hosted on your website, not the embedded ones. So images can take up a lot of space. So there are things that can you can optimize for things like uh, compression and maybe choosing different kind of extension like W, like WebP. And yeah, you, these things can help your site speed a little but you need to make sure that you are not again you need to make sure that the videos are not uploaded on your site like you don't want to be self hosting videos that is that is not a good practice because it will slow down your pages a lot the next thing is caching so caching doesn't affect your site but if you have resources and you can implement caching like browser caching and cdn or something like that then it will help your site it will not slow down your site it will help your page speed and the last thing is server like we have talked about you need to get a good server or good hosting the next thing that we are talking about is accessibility so web accessibility is not just for people with disabilities suppose you are in a concert at night and you want to watch a video for some reason i don't know why then the environmental noise is so loud then that you cannot hear the actual video like you have to do like take your phone and do like this to listen to the audio so at that point you you want that the video includes something more than just the audio like captions so it is not just for people who have disabilities it is for everybody and why does it matter because it is inclusive and provide equal access to everyone, especially people with disabilities. Like I talked before, it is not just for people with disabilities, it is for everybody. And it will be extremely helpful for people who are actually disabled. And it promotes usability, because if your website is accessible, anyone can use it without any problem. So it is not just like you, your website is usable for only certain types of people and not for the other type of people. So it promotes usability and it is the right thing to do because you don't want your site to be usable for just one kind of people you know and it is the law that law requires your site to be accessible in some countries so here are some best practices for accessibility this is not a full list i will i will tell you the key to full list later the first thing is that make sure your website is accessible by keyboard and by keyboard i'm uh, saying the tab key the tab key on your keyboard when you click on it and when you open a site it the the 
वेबसाइट शुड बी एक्सेबल बाय द टैब की एंड बाय द कीबोर्ड लाइक इन टू इन होल एंड द नेक्स्ट इज दैट एड ऑल टेक्स टू इमेज एज एन एस यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड दिस लाइक ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड टाइम्स but this is also a necessary thing for accessibility when we talk about all text is it is mostly for accessibility but people have made it an seo thing that you can stuff your keywords and things like that but it is actually for accessibility next thing is add caption to videos allow users to enlarge font sizes so suppose the font size on your website is too small for people so you should provide a mechanism so that they can enlarge the font sizes and if they do uh, enlarge the font sizes the content of the website should not be you know overlapping each other things like that it should be usable even if it is uh, you know zoomed out to like 200% or something like it should be usable even if the website is zoomed in and it should follow a logical heading structure like you don't want to be like adding h1 and then h3 and then h2 and then h4 and things like that you should make a logical heading structure so you know the heading structure right like h1 to h6 i don't think many people uses h6 or something but i'm just telling you that you should follow a logical heading structure and last is color contrast it should have a contrast between the foreground and the background and these are some more things that you should use if you are using tables then it should be only for using tabular data and not for layout and if you are making web forms like contact forms or maybe lead generation forms or things like that then you should use appropriate labels for these web forms next is that you should use appropriate markup for heading lists and tables tables we have already talked about the next point is that you should have to use way aria to provide any information like landmarks or maybe labels or things like that last is that you should use it it is not just the last point it has two two three points in one point so things like descriptive meta titles and responsive pages and anchor text so all of these things are also mandatory from an seo standpoint that you have to write descriptive meta titles for your pages like meta title and meta description and you should make your website responsive that it should work on different devices and your anchor text should be descriptive these are all the things that are also discussed in seo but you need to know that they are actually from they are also from an accessibility standpoint it is not just for your seo and here i have some tools for you that you can use to determine how accessible your site is so i will link all these tools in the description along with the slides so that you can check it out and here are some resources for web design i especially love these three website because they have different kinds of web design and you can look for yourself what kind of best best practices are there in terms of different in terms of designing different types of pages so you can see like how a pricing page should be designed or how a service page should be designed or how a home page should be designed so these are these are some of the great resources i have found for you and that brings us to the conclusion so the first thing is that our website design should be user friendly easy to navigate and visually appealing next things like mobile friendliness navigation speed and accessibility are crucial for web design and seo and you can check out the resources i have uh, linked for you you can check them out and you can look for yourself how you can improve the accessibility and web design of your website and lastly i have made a web accessibility checklist that you can check out i will link to it in the description along with all of the slides and all of the links so yeah that's it for this video thank you